I'm Joe Clark, canoe slalom athlete, Rio Olympic champion, but looking to maximise on that and go to Tokyo and uh, try and repeat the Rio success. When I first started canoeing, what really pulled me into it was just that I love water. I'm a really competitive person just by my nature. So just love getting out there and trying to be the best that I can possibly be. The rules of canoe slalom are pretty simple. You go down through the green gates, up through the red gates, and then as quickly as possible, try not to incur any penalties. If you touch a gate, then you get a two second penalty. And if you miss one, you get the deadly 50 second penalty. It's very tight racing, so a two second penalty could mean race over. On a lot of occasions, if you see somebody pick up a two second penalty, they will push hard, take more risks, and it kind of makes that final racing even more kind of spectacular. It kind of leaves you flying by the seat of your pants. The different obstacles you get are a wave, a stopper where the water comes back onto itself. You've got boils, which are almost like you think about a kettle boiling, the water boiling in the kettle, you get them, they'll push the boat offline and then you simply got jets from sides. There's a few different techniques we use, but more recently there's become less almost. The sweep technique has become quite a big technique that's been used. That's what I believe won me Rio. It's where you come into the breakouts of the red gates where you go back up through them. You'll do a bow rudder, which is almost like a sculling stroke, and then transfer to the sweep, which will leave your head roughly around here, coming in, out and projecting out as quickly as possible. And then on some of the clips, you might come in and open that bow rudder up, so you're opening up here and that gives you the rotation as well. So I try and think three gates at a time, so one to three, then after, after I've done the third gate, I'll think three to six. Try not to get too far ahead of yourself, uh, but always have a clear plan of what you want to do on those three gates. Chunking it down so it's not quite as big a threat of 24 gates ahead of you, it's just three at a time, ticking them off, just taking it in your stride almost. Clark uses repetition during training sessions to try different techniques and routes, all in pursuit of the fastest line. There is definitely an optimal line in this sport. Uh, trying to achieve that is almost like trying to achieve the impossible. That's almost your plan, is to get to that line. It doesn't necessarily always happen like that, unfortunately. But sometimes the optimal line can actually be achieved without you knowing it. And you find another line that is actually just as good. But that's kind of what makes it exciting as well, that sometimes the lines that you decided to set out on, you get pushed differently and it actually works out better. You get to see the perfect run in the sport hoping to do one one day myself but obviously with all the stoppers the waves and wet wind and all other factors that can come into it trying to keep the optimal line is really hard i think there's definitely lots of precision points in canoe slalom we call them winning margins i think a lot of that is mental and then a lot of it comes down to the technical side of things precision on the inside poles so the pole closest to you and the breakouts the red gates you go back up through trying to really hug those as close as possible without picking up a penalty. And then on the downstream, just trying to keep on the optimal line, keep the boat flowing so it's natural speed on the boat, using the features in the right way to kind of get that boat speed. And I think keeping the boat as dry as possible. It sounds funny in a sport that we're using white water to keep the boat dry, but if you keep it on top, that's what keeps the boat tracking and keeps the speed on as well. In canoe slalom, we always talk about power to weight ratio trying to have that huge amount of power but be as light as possible. That's why kind of almost we look like we skip leg day because it's dead weight almost in the boat. We do quite a lot of gym work as a result of that. Mostly focus on the upper body. A lot of core work as well because it's almost like the powerhouse. If you're weak here, you can't transfer through to the shoulders and the arms. And then obviously a lot of pulling work. You use a lot of that on the water to pull yourself down the course and pull yourself out of the sticky moments within the stoppers, in the waves and get yourself back onto the optimal line as quickly as possible. I think the biggest challenge would be trying to keep in the moment. Sometimes you have a good section and then that leads you to think too far ahead and think about the finish line, almost thinking about your name on that podium. Other times you've had a negative, a penalty or a time loss, which leads you to kind of put the hammer down too much and go 150% and blow out completely. You never know what your competitors have done either. So you've always got to focus on yourself, nobody else, and be kind of ruthless with that. My aim is always to make the final and then you have 10 boats, you have one run in the final to put it all out there. With the men's K1 being so tight with all the racing and all the boats, I put everything out there that I've possibly got on that single day. And sometimes it pays off like you did in Rio with the gold medal. Other times you finish 10th, but once you're in that final, you're in the mix, there's 10 guys, all of it a similar level. And it kind of depends on how it pans out on that day for you. We come out here every single day to train six days a week. And every single day is different. The conditions are different. Even the water moves in a different way every single run. There's never the same flow on the river. And that's what makes it so exciting to come out and try and test your skills 
in different environments, travel around the world, different courses, different configurations, waves, stoppers, it's all different things to contend with. No day is the same. It's a summer sport and in the summer there's no sport better than canoe slalom.